Hello, and welcome to day three of my series on the Baja Divide Cape Loop. This is a 225 mile journey around the southern tip of the beautiful Baja Peninsula. I started this adventure by heading south out of Los Barriles, making my way along the beautiful coastline in Cabo Pulmo National Park. I've met some awesome people, pushed through some sand, and made my way into the mountains. If you'd like to check out some of my previous adventures on the Baja Divide, I will link them down below. I've got my hood on. It's pretty chilly, and I just checked the weather, and it says there's a cold front coming in, which cold for here is much different than cold in Colorado but it's still a little chilly. Oh, I slept so well. When you work hard all day, you definitely fall asleep really quickly. Time to have a great day. But first I have to go through all of that sand. It is time, my friends, for my first Nutella tortilla. A French crepe. <laughs> and a little bit of this. Woo. Thank you, nice, soft, sandy ground for a beautiful place to sleep right beneath this big mountain where I'm headed today. Let's do it. Oh, leg is up and over the bike, and it's time to ride through some deep sand. Let's see how far we get. <laughs> That's about it. <laughs> Straight to pushing. It's gonna be a pushing morning. Whew, a lot of starting and stopping here. Let's go, come on. <laughs> okay. Trying to find the path of least resistance but it's mostly just resistance out here. <laughs> no crashes, no flatties, no whammies, but probably a lot of sandies and I can't do much about that. As always, I try to find the edges. <laughs> That's where the hard dirt is, but then every now and then you need to go through the middle. It just kind of spins you out. <laughs> This is gonna be a good warm up today. I've only been riding for a minute and a half. Whew. So, this section, I'm gonna call it Power Line in honor of the Leadville 100, is not a road. Cars don't travel on this, so I'm guessing it's some sort of a path between ranches or something. There's lots of cow poop and hoof prints out here, and it is. Sandy, but at least there are no vehicles at all. And it's pretty overgrown. You don't want to swipe by one of these guys. There's some serious thorns on that bad boy. <laughs> is bringing back memories of my very first ride on the divide in 2017. Oh god. Wow. Huh. Let's try this again. Nope, not even worth it. I don't think it's worth the energy expenditure to spin around. It's just gonna be a morning walk. <laughs> this is just a test in patience. There's a lesson in everything. Go slow and enjoy it as much as you can. 
you don't have to force yourself to be happy, but hey, you know what? It's Monday morning. I'm not sitting in an office. I'm out here in Baja pushing my bike. It's a beautiful day. That's not that bad, you know? Keep pedaling. You can do it. <laughs> oh boy. I knew what I was getting into when I came to Baja. A lot of sand. So I just took out my phone and opened up Ride with GPS to get a little bit more detail of what's going on here. I could have easily stayed on this highway here and taken a left up here rather than get stuck in all this nonsense. <laughs> it's moments like this on these types of rides when people put these routes together, I'm like, why didn't you just put everybody on the road? Like I understand they're trying to maximize dirt, but this is, this, this stretch here is nonsense. It's only like four miles total here. Could have just put everybody up there, boom and bypassed all this. But I guess this is all part of the experience. <laughs> Good morning, Shadow. How you doing today? Yes, my first win of the day. I found some hard ground. <laughs> I don't know how long it's gonna last, but I'm very happy right now because I can actually pedal. <sighs> the little things little things in life uh oh here's some bones of some bike packers that got stuck out here in the sand that might be a little morbid i'm sorry but uh yeah there's a bunch of bunch of bones right there Whoo getting close getting close i'm able to ride this section which is nice oh there's the road i did it <laughs> yes all right, that might have been the slowest three and a half miles on a bike. Really wasn't on my bike much. You know, some people wake up in the morning, take their dogs for a walk. I took my, my beautiful Priority 600X for a walk. Future Baja Dividers, if you wanna skip that, just take the road. It'll save you some time. But as I was struggling through that, I thought, you know what, Ryan, this is, this is okay. It's a forced, slow down where I just have to be extremely present in the moment and it allowed me the chance to think about some things that are swirling through my mind right now not that I don't have time to think about that when I'm on my bike but pushing through that sand just made me focus uh, a little bit more so I'm grateful for it even though it took a long time and it was a little frustrating and now we'll see what this road is like <laughs> hopefully it's not as sandy Good morning, cows. Buenos dias, vacas. Well, this is very nice and smooth, and these are the rewards of a little bit of struggle. And you know, I was just thinking back to 2017 when I first came down here and how mad I would get at the sandy sections, and I would just fight it and force it. Pedal, 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 pedal. Come on, come on. Ah, you know and I think I've matured a bit since then you know it's all part of the experience sometimes you go fast sometimes you go slow sometimes it's easy sometimes it's hard and for me doing hard things pushing through hard moments really makes you feel good on the other end when you go on an adventure it's not supposed to be easy it's supposed to be a little bit hard so now when I hit that stuff I kind of embrace it in a way that I never did before, and I'm thankful for that. Difficult moments in life are always the ones that teach me the most about myself, and it gives me an opportunity to practice just some mindfulness and patience and problem solving. And I'm grateful for, hopefully, every day, <laughs> learning a little bit more about myself and how to navigate this world and navigate life and relationships. Now that I'm 45, I'm feeling pretty darn good. Whoa, there's a car. I didn't expect that. <laughs> Hello. There's probably some ranchos up here. Anyway, I think the lessons of pushing your bike through sand can be applied to anything in life. <laughs> really, just slow down, embrace it, 
figure out a way to learn something from it and keep moving forward always and you should be pretty good at least that's uh that's been my formula You know what I'm excited about right now? The quesadillas from last night. Mmm, they've warmed up nicely. All right, there's my ascent. Looks a little ascenty. Already climbed quite a bit. I came from that valley. Oh boy, I am so happy right now. I want to know why. Look what's behind me. Water, <laughs> agua. I had heard that it was a wet winter here and that the mountains might have water. And I'm really happy to see this. I am disgusting. I have hot sauce all over my shirt and sweat marks and it's time to cool off and jump in. Oh, I'm so happy. Oh, it's nice and cold. Oh my God, it's freezing cold actually, but I will take it. Whoa. Whoa yes! <laughs> El agua es vida. Water is life. And I just woke up. I was all sticky and gross last night sleeping. And, and as you can see, the water is crystal clear. I even saw some tadpoles in here. And in case you're wondering, yes, I took off my chamois first. I don't want those to be all wet. Thank you, awesome desert oasis, for the cool down and the laundry service. I feel a million times better. Hello cows. Hello. Those are some nice horns. They always look at me funny like, what is this guy gonna do? That's how I feel about the cows too. I'm making my way up and up and up, but it's a pretty mild grade so far. Yesterday was much steeper when I ran into hills, but today I can kind of just get in my groove and grind on up. It's the Pacific Ocean! Does this mean that it's downhill all the way? There's only one way to find out. <laughs> oh, we've got some technical riding here. I'm gonna get off here. It's no use and breaking my bike or my body when you're far away from home. This side of the mountain is way steeper than the other side. Right now I'm on a nice smooth patch, but there are lots of technical sections.
So as a rule of thumb, when I'm on a bike packing adventure, usually in the middle of nowhere, far away from services, I don't go nearly as fast downhill as I would if I were home because of obvious reasons. I don't want to hurt myself or my bike way out here. Oh, uh, hold on. Ah. <laughs> Speaking of being, being careful. <laughs> ah. Give me a second here. We'll catch back up. Ah. Okay, okay, okay. All right. Back to that lesson. I don't take big risks when I'm bike packing because it's just not worth it. Ooh, look how clear that is. It's time to use my little lightsaber, my UV pen to filter some water. Check it out. It's just gonna do its magic in there. Kill all the bacteria. Although, this water's probably very clean. It's coming straight from the mountain and there's not a whole lot of action up there in terms of civilization, maybe some cows, but I just really wanted to try the water. I have plenty, but I want to try this mountain water. Mmm, mmm, viva Mexico! <laughs> Woo. I like riding through the water. It cools off my feet. <laughs> I think I have hit the afternoon doldrums. It is 2.45. I've only gone 28 miles. Most of that's because of the first three or four were so slow, but I'm far away from the mountains as you can see. They're back there now. And the sun is high in the sky, kind of hot. I got my head down and I'm just charging, moving forward. I might ride for another hour, hour and a half, see where that gets me. Check this out, a little desert Christmas decoration. I saw this from a ways off. I was wondering what the heck it was. So I saw these palm trees off from a distance away and palm trees usually mean water. And I found a little bit of water. I'm gonna follow down here and see if there's actually a pool, but if not, still good. I'm probably gonna camp here. This is nice. There's definitely a nice beach to camp on. I don't think it's gonna flood tonight. <laughs> Usually the first thing I do when I get to camp is I set it all up so it's out of the way. And then I go cruise around. And then the second thing I do is I start charging batteries with my power bank. I get all these things topped off so I can make pretty videos for you. And now since I have access to a little bit of water, I'm gonna clean off my legs. My shins always get covered in dust and dirt. And it just feels nicer to sleep when your skin isn't sticky. <laughs> and I can't tell you how nice it is to be able to walk barefoot in Baja. Usually there's a thousand different plants that want to impale you, but not here. Look at this spot. This is luxurious. And you know what it's time for? Frijole. Oh yeah. Looks gross, but it's not. Yum yum. Look at all that good protein and carbs. Ta-da! <laughs> Look at that, now it's happy hour. Mmm, you want some? Yum, 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 yum. Sometimes I'm just so happy to eat beans. 
I stand up and I dance a little bit. So I'm happy. I squeeze out the very last bits of beans in every bag. No bean left behind. Look at this, beachside resort. You know, I'm not far from Cabo San Lucas and there's a lot of beachside resorts just maybe 20 or 30 miles away from me right now and I feel like I'm sharing in their joy, although mine is not as luxurious. This is my style right here. I'm feeling good. Today was a great day. I really enjoyed it. It was beautiful going through the mountains. I loved seeing the water. And I feel like I'm getting back in my groove, you know? The first couple days I was relearning how to do everything and just getting comfortable with this. And, uh, you know, I feel like I'm getting it back, which is nice. And I know I mentioned last night that I didn't quite know what I'm gonna do with myself, my career, my life. Don't you worry, I'm not gonna stop doing YouTube anytime soon. You know, I spent seven years building up this channel to a, up to a point where I can make a living doing it. I'm not gonna bail on it now. They're just more overarching questions of, you know, what type of content am I gonna continue making? and All those types of things, you know, because I want to continue evolving as a creator, as a storyteller. So, you know, it's funny, you ride all day long here and you go, today I went like 35 miles. You just don't put on big miles here in Baja, you know, compare that to Sweden where I was doing, you know, easily 80 to 100 miles a day. Uh, that's the difference with pavement or just gravel roads. Baja is slow moving. <sighs> really grateful. Really, really grateful to be here and to be sharing this with you. That's the whole point from day one when I started a public access show in Boulder, Colorado in 2006 on channel 54. Ryan Van Duller. Nice. Hello and welcome to another fun and exciting edition of Out There. My name is Ryan. I love life and I'm here to share all of my adventures with you. The goal was always to show adventures and in that case, Boulder adventures, nearby adventures, and inspire you to go out and challenge yourself. And I hope these videos are doing that. Because that is the goal, the main goal, la meta. All right. Buenas nachos. Oh, no chase, nachos, no chase. <laughs> now get up off that couch, go do some adventures, have some fun. Since it is the holiday season, make sure to be extra nice to everyone. Oh yeah, get off your couch and get out there. Now it's your turn to get out there. Now get off your couch, that one right there, yep, that one, and come out and play. The weather is beautiful. What's up, amigos and amigas? I'm here to talk about some new merchandise. Check out this shirt, it's so soft. Get out there, team doozer. Look at that design on the back. If you want this shirt, it is for sale right now for a limited time on the Priority website. I will link it down below. As a reminder, we don't make any money off of the sales of the merchandise. Everything that we create, we donate to wonderful nonprofits doing good things in the world of cycling. All of the money from this shirt is going to the Dream Team in Iowa that gets young kids on bikes and then they complete RAGBRAI at the end of their program. It's super cool. This shirt is made in the USA. It is organic cotton. And that's why the price of the shirt is a little more than the cheap stuff you see in most stores, you know? It's really important for me to make shirts that are paying people a living wage and are as good for the environment as they can be. So that's why these are 40 bucks, but remember the money goes toward a good cause. Speaking of another good cause, check out these socks. Woo -hoo -hoo. You've seen them in my videos now. These are my Olay socks. They are so cool. On the foot of the sock, it says, get out there. And I think even up here, if you roll it down, it says, doozer. These socks are also made in the USA. They are merino wool. They don't stink like a lot of that plasticky, sporty type clothing. And these are for sale now. I will also link them down below. They are made by an awesome company here in Colorado called Point Six. And as long as we're talking about that stuff, let's talk about my book. A lot of you have already bought this, but if you haven't, it is now available in ebook format. And if you still want the real book, that is still available. 
This was uh, printed in Boulder, Colorado in the most eco-friendly way possible. All of the ink in the book is algae-based, non-toxic ink. It's really important to me to create products that are good for the humans who make them and good for the environment. And of course, good for you as well. So that was a lot of talking about merch. <laughs> are you still with me? Are you still there? If you want to buy it, I will link them down below. Really appreciate your support and all the nonprofits appreciate your support as well. Now it's time, as I always say, to get out there.